Hi, I'm Margaret and thank you so much for joining me here on The Gardening Me. It's, as you can tell, chilly outside. <gasps> Summer is officially behind us. Fall is officially here. And with fall comes bulbs. That's what I'm talking about today. I put in an order for a bunch of bulbs back around maybe end of June, beginning of July, something like that. And they came in last week. It's kind of exciting when you open up that box and see all that stuff that you completely forgot you bought. So my mail order bulbs are right here and I didn't go crazy. And the reason is that this is actually one year when I finally remembered that when you order a lot of bulbs you also have to plant a lot of bulbs sometimes I'm a bit over enthusiastic on the purchase end and then when it comes to planting not so much so I restrained myself a bit and in the grand scheme of things really didn't get that many things but I got a lovely variety of um, items so why don't we dig in and the first thing I'm going to talk about are tulips. I want my tulips to come back year after year. So I specifically was seeking out um, varieties that would naturalize, that they wouldn't kind of fizzle out after a year or two, that kind of thing. So I ended up buying two of what are known as botanical tulips. Now species tulips are those that haven't been hybridized at all. Botanical tulips are hybrids, but they still remain very close to the species tulips. So what that means is that several things so they're smaller than typical tulips in terms of the height the flower is also smaller than typical tulips but on the positive side and really I actually don't mind and quite like the small little tulips they're so so sweet um, so I don't mind the smaller stature and the smaller flower at all on the plus side, they naturalize. So what that means is they actually multiply. So instead of having a bunch of tulips and then every year it gets less, if these like their location, every year you'll have more. So that's one thing. And the other thing is, of course, the fact that they come back year after year much more reliably than the um, typical hybrid tulips. Now, one thing I did read, which I don't have deer issues, but, if I did, apparently these are a little less attractive to deer than standard tulips. Can't speak to that and probably, well, I'm hoping I will never be able to speak to that, quite frankly. I enjoy not having deer in our garden. So I purchased three types of tulips and two of them are the botanical tulips and they're in both in the same series, um, prey stands, I hope I pronounced that correctly. And the first one is Shogun, and it's this one right here. And it is a beautiful open face tulip where the petals are just sort of splayed out. It's orange with almost a red star-like coloration right in the middle. And the stamens are also a deep red. Now the next one I have is in the same series of prey stems, but this one is Unicum and it is a red tulip. The thing that drew me to this one in particular was the beautiful variegated foliage. I haven't yet grown a tulip with variegated foliage, so I'm really looking forward to that. And the tulips themselves are red and the very typical standard tulip shape, kind of like a cup-like shape. The next tulip I got is called the First, and it is a Kaufmanniana tulip. It has creamy white petals, and every other petal has a beautiful streak of red to it. And it almost looks in the photo as if the bottom of each flower, it kind of graduates from a very creamy color at the top to a beautiful yellow at the base. Kaufmanniana tulips 
are tulips that were originally discovered in Turkestan in the 1800s. And I believe they are species tulips. So just as with the botanical tulips, these will naturalize. So hopefully I'll get larger and larger clumps. And these will also come back much more reliably year after year. Now I didn't mention, but all three of, so these are the three of the tulips that I got. All three of them are uh, mid spring bloomers. The next bulbs that I got are leucogem, leucogem. They kind of look like snowdrops, but they're not snowdrops. They're snowflakes. They're a different genus. These are similar in appearance to snowdrops, but they are much taller. I believe they're about twice as tall as snowdrops. Here it says that they get to approximately 16 to 20 inches tall. The flowers themselves are these beautiful cup-like blooms, and they have green dots at the tip of every petal. In addition to them being taller than snowdrops and the flowers being obviously different than snowdrops, the other difference is their bloom time. They bloom a little bit later than snowdrops by about two or so weeks. And the other thing about snowflakes is that the foliage actually lasts quite a long time after the bulbs, or not the bulbs, the blooms <laughs> die back. Um, I'm not sure whether that's going to be a good thing or not. If the foliage still looks really nice at that point, then it might be a good thing. It might add kind of like a grassy little texture thing happening. But if it doesn't look that great, sort of like allium foliage usually doesn't look that great after the flower blooms, then that might not be a good thing. The wind is picking up. <laughs> So next I'm going to talk about daffodils and I have some here and I also purchased some from these guys. So I have three different daffodil varieties that I purchased here. The first one is Narcissus Actea and this one is a beautiful white daffodil and it has a small vibrant yellow cup in the middle that's rimmed with a bright red. That is gonna look, I think, so amazing when it blooms. Every bulb I get, I'm always super looking forward to it and I'm always thinking it's gonna be just amazing. Of course, otherwise I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> this is an heirloom and apparently this one naturalizes pretty rapidly so that's always a bonus it's an average height for a daffodil at around 15 to 17 inches tall so the next one i purchased is this one called cheerfulness as well an heirloom and it has gorgeous double blooms this one is really fragrant and it's also one of the last ones to bloom in the spring it's 16 inches tall and it also receives the award of merit from the Royal Horticulture Society. The last daffodil I got is sort of reminiscent of the tulips I got, the botanical tulips, because it is one that also stays very, very small. And it is referred to here as a mini narcissus. And it is called Arctic Bells. It is just such a cute little bell shape with these kind of starry petals going around the back of the bell. And it has a gorgeous, very light, pale yellow flower, but the stamens are almost a chartreuse with gorgeous yellow tips. This one gets only four inches tall. So, like this big. Now that is small. 
For this, I'm definitely going to be putting these somewhere. I think I have a couple of packages here. I'm going to be putting them kind of near the front of our walkway. I really want to see these little guys when they come up, and I want to see them all the time. And the front of our walkway is right near our driveway, which is where, you know, we come up with our cars. So I want to make sure to plant them where I can really enjoy them. I don't know about you guys, but we don't really go to our front door. <laughs> So I kind of want to put a lot of the really nice things closer to where I can see it as well, right? So it's not just people coming to the front door and I kind of catch a peek of it when I'm opening the door. So I purchased a couple of packages of these and these are Muscari or what's the common name for these? Grape hyacinth. So I purchased a couple of packs of these. The one thing about Muscari or grape hyacinth is that I have heard some people say that they can get pretty aggressive in terms of spreading around because they not only spread themselves through their bulbs, but they also spread through seed. So I have tried to stay away from the two species that are known for being rampant spreaders. One of them is Neglectum and the other one which actually is the more popular variety. I'm not going to butcher the name I'm trying to pronounce it but I'll put it on the screen right now. And those two are kind of the really aggressive spreaders. And I'm sure it depends on your situation. In some instances, they may be very well behaved. Whereas in others, I've heard people say it's been like crazy the way they've spread all over this place. So I've tried to stay away from those, as I said. And the two varieties I got, this being one of them, are not either of those species. So the first one I got is a Muscari Aucheri, I think is how you say it. And this one has beautiful blooms that are sort of an ombre going from a deep blue to a medium blue all the way down to white. The other variety I got is called Muscari Paradoxum and it is a deep, deep blue. This one is an heirloom variety from 1884. It is only about six inches tall. The one thing about this particular variety is it's not as hardy as the other Muscari, which are normally around a zone four to eight. This one is zone five to nine. Now when I'm talking about Muscari and its spreading tendencies as well, I'm sure these will spread as well, but I just think that the other ones are sort of like really big spreaders, whereas these are kind of more controlled and slow spreaders, which is what I want. Now you can't buy bulbs, in my opinion, without including at least one allium. I have several that I've ordered over the last few years, several different varieties, and they range in color from purple to kind of light purple to white. But one color I didn't have yet was a yellow allium. I'd actually never even seen these before until I saw this in the catalog. And this one is called Yellow Fantasy. The flowers are beautiful, chartreuse -y. They're sort of like fireworks and they sort of kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, like a mop head almost. And I think they're gonna be gorgeous. They're a rather small flower head, only about two to four inches across, and they are not one of the taller alliums. They do stay on the shorter side at only about 14 to 16 inches tall. So I am going to want to put these kind of closer to the front of the border rather than putting them more towards the middle. They're all exciting. There's one more here that is super exciting. Except for the snowflakes, I have all of these bulbs, um, types of bulbs in the garden already. Not these varieties, but these, these types. So tulips, daffodils, etc. This is one that I don't have in the garden and I'm super excited to get it. And it is 
a fritillaria. This one is a totally different animal from the humongous uh, fritillaria that we're all used to, which is that really huge kind of flower with the bell-shaped blooms kind of coming around the center. This one is a decidedly small flower. The amazing thing is it has a checkerboard pattern on it. You almost think that there's no way that can be real. Or when I look at it, that's what I think. There's no way that something that's that geometric can be real. The flower colors vary from purplish to brownish to white. They are a reliable repeat bloomer and they do bloom from mid to late spring and they have grass-like leaves um, that are bluish green. So once again, I'm wondering if those leaves are going to add a nice grass-like texture once the bulbs have finished blooming or whether they're gonna be a little bit on the ratty side. And this one does not get really tall like the other kind. This only gets 14 to 16 inches tall. And just like the Cheerfulness Narcissus, this one also received the Royal Horticulture Society's Award of Merit. So these I know exactly where I'm going to plant them already. They're going to be going into the um, flower border that's in my raised bed area. I have a ton of daffodils in there, but I noticed that this um, spring when all of them were coming up that I had so much yellow. Yellow, a little bit of white, I didn't have any real color, so I'm really hoping that this will bring some color to that area in the spring. Although this doesn't seem like much, there are about 250 bulbs in here. So even though I had a lot of restraint, or what I thought was a lot of restraint in the summer buying fall bulbs, maybe I didn't have as much as I thought I did. I have 50 of the Fritillaria, 100 of the Muscari, but these are teeny tiny bulbs and they're gonna be super easy to plant. So there's that. My plan is to get these in the ground sooner rather than later. I'm thinking within the next week or so, I'm going to get these into the ground. There are quite a lot of them that I'm going to be getting into the hosta bed that I planted up a couple of weeks ago. And then after that is when I'm planning on adding the drip to that area and doing the mulching, which I still haven't done. But I thought it was better to get these bulbs in first, then do all that before the really cold weather sets in. And while I'm really excited to get these in the ground, I'm even more excited to see how they do over the coming years and whether they do in fact naturalize and kind of get bigger and I can dig some up and spread them around it'll be amazing thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time bye and it is a fritillaria and it is fritillaria fritillaria meliag Meliagris? There it is. I'll do a close-up shot. <laughs>